Well, hello, and a warm welcome to the Modbury Mission Community online service. A warm welcome if you're part of one of the five churches of our mission community, and a special welcome if you don't normally come to church. It's great to have you with us on our online service. And like all our church services, we hope that our time together today will help all of us get to know the Lord Jesus and follow him. On the website, you'll find a service sheet with the words for today's service, and also on the website, you'll find an activity for the families to do together and a talk for the children to watch and take part in. Well, as we start today, let's turn to our words of greeting, words which you'll find in the service sheet, but also will be coming up on the screen as well. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we start today, let me read to you a verse from the New Testament, from our reading from John chapter 14. The Lord Jesus says this, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let me lead us in an opening prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Lord Jesus. We thank you that he brings us to you. Today we're sorry for the times that we fail to live by Jesus the truth. Assure us that life is found in him today and forever. Amen. Well, you'll notice today that I'm not filming in my study, but in St George's, here in the Remembrance Chapel in Mobbury. And the reason for that is because on Friday, we celebrated V Day. And also this week, the bishops have said that clergy, that vicars are allowed back into the church buildings to pray, but also to do filming for services as well. And so part of our service will be from inside St George's today. But unfortunately, church buildings are still closed to members of the public. But as soon as that changes, we'll let you know. Well, let's turn to our first hymn as we sing to encourage ourselves. You'll find it on the service sheet and also up on the screen. To God be the glory, great things he hath done.
Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may be, that you may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From, from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after being among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, many thanks to Brian for reading this week's reading. Well, on Friday, we celebrated the 75th anniversary of Victory in Europe Day. And films like Saving Private Ryan and uh, the TV show Band of Brothers are a helpful reminder to many generations just how difficult it was to win victory in Europe. I can't imagine what it must have been like for those soldiers, the fear, the anxiety, the troubled hearts. But I imagine what did calm their troubled hearts at times were letters from home, letters from wives, letters from sweethearts, letters from family or from children, letters which I guess were taken out of jackets regularly, unfolded and read, letters full of words which gave comfort to troubled hearts. Well, today in John chapter 14, Jesus is talking to disciples who have troubled hearts. The reason why they're anxious and afraid is that Jesus has just told them that he is going away. And for the time being, they cannot follow him where he is going. Now, of course, Jesus is talking about his death, his resurrection, and then his triumphant and glorious return to his father in heaven. But the disciples haven't yet grasped that. And so Jesus speaks these words to them to give them comfort. Jesus speaks these words to them so they can look back at them again and again, perhaps take them out and re-look at them as they might find their hearts anxious once the Lord Jesus has gone. Well, what will create a strong and stable faith in Jesus during troubled times? Well, first of all, the passage tells us, that knowing that Jesus has returned to the Father means his disciples will never be abandoned. Verse 2 gives them that assurance. Jesus says these words, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you? I am going there to prepare a place for you. Jesus here uses picture language, the language of a huge house with many rooms, to represent knowing God now and knowing God forever. And Jesus says that it's his going which will prepare a place for his disciples in his father's presence. You see, all of this is said in the shadow of the cross. 24 hours on from these words, 
Jesus will have to face the cross, where he'll die for his people's sin, for his people's failure, where he'll rise again, leaving the tomb empty. And then later he'll ascend to his father in heaven, showing us that sin has been defeated, death has been done away with, and those who are united to the Lord Jesus in faith, because he has ascended to the father's right hand side, can be confident that they have access to God the Father. And all that can happen only if Jesus goes away. It is Jesus going away that is for his disciples good. It's for their benefit. A friend of mine was um, put up for adoption when he was a child. And uh, he said to me that um, when that happens to you, you never lose that sense of being abandoned or fear that it's going to happen again. But because he is a Christian, he can also say that he has got confidence that God will not abandon him because the Lord Jesus went to the cross, rose from the grave and then has ascended to the Father's right hand side. Jesus going guarantees that his followers will never be abandoned. And Jesus' first words to his disciples are words for us to trust to today. Trust in God. Trust also in me, the Lord Jesus says. But secondly, firm and stable faith will be created by knowing that Jesus will return for his own. Let me read to you verse 3 from our reading, which shows that this morning. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be where I am. Now here we have a future promise to calm present fears. I take it that Jesus here is talking about his return, what we call his second coming, what we affirm every week when we say the creed. And I believe that he will come again to judge the living and the dead. And his return will be for these disciples the time where he takes them to himself, takes them to be with him. What will calm troubled hearts is knowing that in the future, his people, his disciples will be with the Lord Jesus. Christianity is a future orientated faith. It's got lots of benefit for the present, but it also raises our eyes to the future. Christians of all people should be a forward looking people, knowing that the goal of history, that the end point of history, is the return of the Lord Jesus to take his people to be with him. Over the lockdown, one of the things that I've enjoyed doing is watching um, some of the England football games being replayed on TV. And um, what's great about watching uh, a replay is that you know the result. So no, ma no matter how many times England make a mistake and pass, no matter how many times they let in a goal, no matter how many of them get sent off, you know as you watch this match, that the result will be a victory. You know that at the end of this match, those wearing the shirt with three lions on it will be celebrating together. Well, in many ways, those who trust in God and trust in Jesus know that the Lord Jesus will one day return to claim his people for his own and they will be with him forever. Well, the knowledge of that future can calm anxious and troubled hearts in the here and the now. And finally, a stable and secure faith will have the Lord Jesus as his object, will rest upon the Lord Jesus. Jesus confirms that in verse 6. When he answers Thomas's question, he says this, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is asking um, or is answering a question um, in response to Thomas's question about um, how, well, what is the root to all these blessings that Jesus is talking about? And his answer shows why trust in Jesus in himself is so central. Along our coastline, along um, uh, the countryside in our area, there are many signposts pointing the way for the paths which crisscross the countryside and the coast. Next time you pass one of those signposts, Remember what Jesus says here, that he is the way to God, that he is the way 
to the truth about life, that he is the way to real and genuine spiritual life. We affirm that, don't we, at every baptism service, where either the candidates or the godparents are asked this question. Do you come to Christ, the way, the truth and the life? And of course they answer, I come to Christ. A real, a stable, a secure faith has the Lord Jesus at his object. Of course, sometimes it's hard to see him. Of course, sometimes circumstances mean that it's difficult to trust him. But a stable faith keeps on going back to the Lord Jesus. Because it's through the Lord Jesus that we come to the Father. As it is Jesus who reveals the Father to us. Reveals the Father to us in his words and in his actions. Jesus leads us to God the Father. As verse 7 reminds us, as Jesus said, If you really know me, you know my Father as well. From now on you do know him and have seen him. When you come to Christ, you come to the Father. When you take on the baptism decision for yourself, which all of us who are adults have to do, we come to the Father through the Lord Jesus. Now you might be thinking this, and fear that it's terribly narrow-minded. What about other people who have got sincere beliefs? What about other people who honestly hold on to what they believe? Well, I found it helpful to remember who these words are from. They're from the person in history who is the least narrow-minded that you could imagine. The person who welcomed all sorts of people, the rich, the poor, the conservative, the liberal, the outcasts, those on the inside, those who were educated, those who weren't, those who were invaders, those who were the oppressed, those who were female, those who were male. Jesus welcomed all people, and yet he still says these words which are exclusive. No one gets to the Father except through him. Well, perhaps you worry that these words might lead to arrogance. But if we truly understand these words, and if we take them to heart, it won't puff us up in pride, but it'll bring us down a peg or two. Because here we're reminded that the only way to the Father is through the Son. That it took the Son of God becoming one of us, living our life, dying our death, to enable us to know God the Father. That we ourselves, under our own steam, under our own merit, can't know God the Father. But Jesus has to open the way for us. Once we realise that, that Jesus left heaven to raise us up to heaven, it doesn't make us proud, but it humbles us, seeing how much it cost. Well, as we finish today, what will create a strong and stable faith for any time, including the troubled times, is one that comes to rest upon the Lord Jesus. As that old hymn puts it, turn your eyes upon Jesus, or as Jesus says, Trust in God, trust also in me. Let me lead us in the words of the special prayer for today. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world, and the wonder of your risen life would it give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. We're going to sing our next song now together. Now when peace like a river. Words you'll find in the service sheet, but also up on the screen. Now when peace like a river. It is well 
with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should Assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. Attends my way when sorrow like sea billows Whatever my Lord you have taught me to say, it is well. Well, for our prayers today, I'm uh, joined by uh, Michael and Ruth Jarvis, who live in Kingston and are longtime members of St. James the Less. Ruth, many of you might recognise because she works in the preschool in Mobbury. Ruth, can you give us uh, a little bit of insight into how uh, the preschool has been coping uh, during this time of lockdown? Well, it's been really hard. Um, we didn't want to close the preschool. It was a really hard decision to make. And we're really sad and missing all the children terribly. Um, but we've been able to keep in touch with them quite well over the uh, computer and um, send them messages and receive information back from parents as to what they've been doing at home. So that's been really special. Um, I'm now furloughed, as are most of the other members of staff. And Kate, our manager, and now our um, assistant person she's um they're both keeping things going for us and parents are able to get in touch with them and get support from them and um so hopefully everyone's all, all managing to do that um so yeah i'm at home and uh, spending time with my own family and catching up with jobs and things but planning lots of activities and forest school things and nice things for them to do um, when we eventually do get back and when we open, which we're really looking forward to, and to seeing them all again. So, oh, I think lots of parents are looking forward to uh, schools and preschools reopening. Well, thanks for that update, Ruth. And uh, as, uh, as members of our churches, let's be uh, remembering in our prayers um, uh, homeschooling, uh, families, they teach their uh, children at home, uh, and also our, our teachers um, who are setting work from, uh, um, from their computers from home. And uh, let's be praying that schools will be back uh, as places of learning soon. Michael and Ruth, could you lead us in our prayers today? In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to God in the confidence that he will be with us in our prayers. We pray for your worldwide church. Please bless it, nurture it, and help it to grow and flourish. Protect it from adversity and persecution in all its forms. May you give 
all its members the courage, confidence and opportunity to spread your message of love and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our Queen and thank you for her example of living faith in you. We remember before you our leaders and all those who exercise political, moral and scientific authority over us at this time of global crisis. Grant them wisdom, patience and honesty in their decisions. Guide them with your ever-present light and teach us all to respect each other so that we may learn to make our world a fairer and better place. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for everyone whose lives have been affected by the pandemic or by accident, war, disease, violence, greed or natural disasters. Please give them hope and relief. We thank you for all those people who have unselfishly helped us during these troubled times. We especially think of medical staff, carers, support workers, and all who strive to help in difficult circumstances. And we ask for your blessings upon them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our families and all of those dear to us, both near and far at this time. We thank you for all who teach and guide our children as they grow and learn. Let us remember every day to view the world you have created like a child of wonder seeing something new for the first time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our communities and all within them who are struggling with problems, pressures and illness at this time. We thank you for good neighbours and friends. We remember before you all who are in need. Ron Knight of Kingston, poorly in hospital, recovering from a stroke, and all others known to us. Please help relieve and reassure them with your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those at the end of their lives who are travelling towards your eternal rest. Grant them and their loved ones the knowledge of your everlasting love and comfort. We also remember all who have gone before and thank you for their legacy of lives well lived and lasting memories. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray in a spirit of reflection, reconciliation and gratitude for all those men and women who have served and died in active service during the Second World War and whose sacrifice brought victory in Europe. We honour their courage and cherish their memory. We also remember in our prayers those who continue to serve to this day. May we put our faith in your future, knowing that you are the eternal source of peace, life and hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
Finally, Lord, we bring before you in a brief moment of quiet all our individual concerns and ask for your grace and guidance in them. Lord, please accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, many thanks to Michael and Ruth for leading us in today's prayers. Let's carry on in an attitude of prayer as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. And so gathering our prayers and praise into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, as we move towards the end of our service today, let's say the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and evermore. Amen. Well, thank you for joining today online for our service. I hope that you found it helpful. If at any point you've got any questions which have been raised by anything that we've talked about on these online services, then uh, don't hesitate to get in contact with me via phone or email. You'll find my contact details on the church website, www.mobbreteam.org. We want to be a group of Christians who um, feel able to ask questions and to think about our Christian faith. Well, if you are a regular member of uh, one of the five churches here in our mission community, and uh, you normally give gifts via the plate on a Sunday, can I uh, encourage you, if you can, to be putting aside those gifts and then handing them in at an appropriate time when we're back meeting together? Or if you'd like to give via um, online, then do get in contact with the treasurer of your church and they can give you the details to do that. We'll be meeting again online for our service on Sunday morning where the service will be available, but it also can be watched at any point during the week as well. Well, as we finish, let me say the words of the blessing. May the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. VE Day, adapted from a poem by John Carter Brown. Victory in Europe, 75 years ago. To some it doesn't mean a thing, it happened long ago. It's just a thing they talk about, those old men down the street. Today's kids cannot understand, they never felt the heat. They never knew the torment, the heartache, pain and death. They've never seen a soldier that's fighting for his breath. The victory in Europe was certainly hard won. For who lost a brother, a father, or a son? For men who gave the ultimate upon some foreign land, a poppy for a headstone, now growing in the sand. This victory in Europe, about which now I write, it made me free. I'm glad I didn't have to go and fight. I'm thankful that those old men, the ones still living yet, keep talking of VE Day and won't let us forget.